My name is Anita Altman, and I am the board president of Yafed. Chaim Fishman grew up in Williamsburg and attended a Hasidic Chayre and Yeshiva until the age of 15, and has had a little bit different experience. So Chaim, please do share your story with us. Um, and then I guess I'll just give a brief overview of just my background story and how I got here. So as I need to mention, I'm Chaim, or I sometimes go by Jay. And I grew up in the Hasidic Jewish community in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. And I attended the Puppa Cheder and Yeshiva until the age of 15. So um, for those unfamiliar, Puppa, which is P-U-P-A, is the name of the Hasidic sect. And Cheder, as uh, G mentioned earlier, is the Yiddish term that's usually used for Orthodox boys elementary and middle school. And then as G mentioned earlier to that, within the Hasidic community, the term Yeshiva is usually only used to refer to boys, high schools, and beyond. So in Cheder, I received a solid Jewish religious ed education. I learned a lot about the Torah, the Talmud, Halacha, which is Jewish law, and, and Hasidic thought. But when it came to secular studies, it was very minimal in elementary and middle school, and then completely non-existent in high school. In Hasidic Yeshiva High School, for example, we were in school from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. That's 13 hours a day. And we studied exclusively religious studies, no math, no English, nothing. Luckily, I did have some exposure to the world outside of yeshiva through my father, which hopefully I'll get to talk more about later. So when I began spending 13 hours a day just studying religious studies, I realized that that's not what I wanted to do in life, and that there's so much more out there that I wish I'd, I'd want to learn about. But I knew that the only way I could possibly learn them was if I attended a school outside of the community. So in the late spring of 2013, um, I was 15 years old. I suddenly dropped out of my yeshiva to be able to pursue a secular education. Obviously, you know, much, much easier said than done. And there were so many obstacles and sacrifices along the way, which I hope we'll talk more about um, later in the panel. So I guess like unlike Jean, um, I left when I was 15, which is a relatively young age. So I've heard stories from family members and friends about their schools giving them bogus credits and making them sign documents about courses they've supposedly taken so that the yeshiva can get government funding designated for college. But given that I dropped out before college age, I have no such personal experiences. So then the following year, I attended a modern Orthodox yeshiva in Brooklyn, where they had a half a day of religious studies and the second half were secular studies. So it was Orthodox, so we still had a rigorous focus on the Talmud and the Torah. But unlike in my Hasidic ultra-Orthodox school, I was able for the first time in my life to take a history class and a science class. It was also the first time that I was around people who spoke English and didn't just speak Yiddish. The next year, I transferred to public school. I went to New Exploration into Science, Technology, and Math, or they call it NEST plus M, which is a public high school in the Lower East Side. And I spent my next three years of high school there, and then I got my high school diploma and graduated from there. Then for college, I got accepted into UPenn, University of Pennsylvania, where I'm currently at. Um, so I'm studying computer science, and I'm actually going to start my senior year in two weeks. I mean, for me, obviously, I was very fortunate that I did end up getting a full four years of high school. Um, so but by the time I got to college, I've definitely, you know, mostly caught up on academically. I mean, still, you know, now it's mostly the pop culture stuff that I'm completely clueless about. But um, most of the struggles, I'd say, like, catching up was in high school. Um, you know, that was really hard, you know, to start to catch up. But I, by the end of four years of high school, I was mostly caught up. Although I'd say that even academically, there's still, I still have a lot of gaps now, even, you know, going into my senior year of college at Penn, I say, I say like there's still a lot of gaps that I'm kind of missing. Um, so generally what I realize is that, you know, many things that they teach in middle school and elementary school, we kind of relearn in high school. So for example, you know, the math and science I kind of picked up, even though I didn't have a middle school, like in high school, I saw it for the first time and it was really challenging picking it up then, but at least I was able to pick it up in high school before I got to college. So, um, but it's something that they don't teach in high school again. So, for example, like geography or anatomy or stuff like that, that they kind of just teach you in middle school. Like, that's like a lot of things like that I just still haven't picked up. So, for example, like the past few months of a quarantine, I started running with some friends. Um, and then before running, they, we would do some stretches. And then my friend told me, you know, to stretch my quads and then my calves. And then I had no idea what those things were. Um, just because, you know, I just never learned any basic anatomy. And that's something that they didn't kind of relearn in high school. So then over the next few days, um, they would teach me some, you know, basic, basic muscles before running every day. So now, I, you know, I finally know what like, claws and hamstrings and calf and shin are. But that's, you know, I just picked it up, like, the past two months. Um, and there's still, like, a lot of small things like that that I just, you know, just never picked up, even, you know, as a senior, like, going into senior in college. And 
there's, I'm sure there's so many other things that, you know, I know nothing about completely. So I don't even know that I don't know it just because I just don't know it about it all. Sure. So, I mean, it's, it's obviously more complicated and I'm, I hope to talk more about it later. But yeah, I did have, my father did go to college um, and he did, you know, um, I did have that support to an extent. Until the age of 15, I spoke exclusively in Yiddish. Um, and that's, you know, pretty shocking given that, you know, I'm the third generation of my family living in New York City. So it's pretty crazy that, you know, the third generation, I still didn't speak English until age 15. Um, so I did know, like, you know, some, some basic words, you know, I could write a very simple, you know, hello, good morning, I love my cat, you know, I could write simple stuff like that. But um, I only started speaking English at age 15 once I dropped out of my Hasidic Yeshiva.